Welcome to Secondary Sources in Law and Their Use in Legal Research. This is a tutorial by the Jerome Hall Law Library at Indiana University Mauer School of Law. In this brief video, we'll discuss what secondary sources are and when to use them in legal research. We can divide our legal research resources into two categories, primary and secondary sources. Primary sources are anything that has the force of law, such as statutes and cases, but also regulations, executive orders, and constitutions. Secondary sources are everything else, anything that explains or analyzes the law. This is a broad categorization to be sure, including everything from treatises and encyclopedias to websites and blogs. Where the types of secondary sources differ, then, is in their level of detail and their level of authority. The following videos will highlight some of the most commonly used secondary sources in law and when you might use each. When we conduct legal research, our primary goal is to find what the law says about our legal question. So primary sources, such as statutes and cases, are the main target. Secondary sources, as a complement, are a great place to start your research. If you're unfamiliar with the legal issue you're researching, explanations in a secondary source can help you quickly gain background in a legal area. The more analytical secondary sources can also help you strategize by showing you the strengths and weaknesses of a particular area of law, recent developments, common challenges, and more. Furthermore, if you start your research with a secondary source, the citations it provides through annotations or footnotes can help jumpstart your primary source research by leading you to the top cases and statutes on that particular legal issue. While excellent legal research resources, there are a few things to keep in mind when using secondary sources. Generally, you don't cite to a secondary source. It's useful in research, but you want to always make sure you cite to the law itself. As a broad category of materials, secondary sources range in level of authority. Some, like treatises, are highly respected and valued. Others, like encyclopedias, are handy but less authoritative. The videos that follow will discuss the level of authority of each type of secondary source. While Lexis and Westlaw often overlap in the content they carry, for instance, they have fairly comparable statutory collections, secondary sources are a category where they vastly differ. Each service publishes or contracts with different legal publishers, so their secondary source content varies greatly. If you have access to both Lexis and Westlaw when conducting secondary source research, it's highly advisable to check both to see what different results you produce. You should now have a basic understanding of the difference between primary and secondary sources and when and how to use secondary sources in legal research. This concludes the introductory tutorial on secondary sources. You may now advance to the tutorials on encyclopedias, treatises, legal periodicals, and the American Law Reports. If you have any questions, the reference librarians are happy to help.